From the smallest gastropods to whole galaxies, the spiral is a shape that we see again and again in our natural world. One place you wouldn't expect to find it, however, is in the toothy mouth of a giant extinct shark-like fish that lived over 250 million years ago. This is Helicoprion. Hi, I'm Talia Lowy Mary, and you're watching Paleologic. Today, we're talking about the extinct shark-like fish, the Helicoprion. Helicoprion was a huge cartilaginous fish. It was about twice the size of a great white shark, though it was much narrower by comparison and had fewer fins. Helicoprion would have swam around sometime in the Permian period, from around 300 to 250 million years ago. Helicoprion fossils have been found in Asia, Europe, the Americas, and Australia, indicating that these creatures were swimming all over the globe. Although it resembled sharks and was a predator, Helicoprion wasn't actually closely related to sharks at all. The starkest difference from sharks is, of course, the circular saw of razor-sharp teeth on its face. These spirals of teeth, called tooth whorls, are almost all that remain of these creatures, with about 100 examples existing in collections around the world. Because helicoprion skeletons were made primarily of cartilage, like sharks, most of their tissues would disintegrate before they had a chance to be preserved in time. Even in the rare case when cartilage is preserved, Overzealous paleontologists of the past would often unknowingly hack through that fossilized cartilage to get to those sexy tooth whorls below. As with most extinct creatures we've covered on this channel so far, debates around classification have remained hot since Helicoprion's first discovery in 1886 in Western Australia. At the time, the fish scientists who found it believed Helicoprion to simply be a new species of Edestis, another genus of extinct cartilaginous fish. Most recently, Helicoprion has been classified as part of the group Holocephaly. The only living members of this group are today's chimeriforms, also known as ratfish or chimeras. In 1899, a Russian geologist discovered a fragment of this famous buzzsaw jaw in Kazakhstan. He knew for sure that he had found a new genus of fish. What he didn't know was where exactly this tooth whorl fit on the fish in question. Initially, he assumed it was curled up like a party blower at the end of Helicoprion's snout, which is why he named this fish Helicoprion, which literally translates to spiral jaw. This whorl was so weird that it left scientists scratching their heads about the sea's jankiest jaws for over a century. Some scientists hypothesized that the whorl grew out of the upper back or fin, unfurling as part of a defensive display. Others thought it might have attached to the tail or lower down on the back. Almost a decade after its first discovery, a helicoprion preserved in a more natural position was discovered and show that the world definitely came from the mouth. Whether it came from the upper or lower jaw was still up for debate. And just where it fit in the mouth was another source of wild speculation. Some thought it would curl out and downward, while others imagined it would sit where the tongue should be or even at the back of the throat. What we understand today about Helicoprion can be attributed to the fossil of a crushed individual, which was found in 1950 in Idaho. This whorl has a diameter of 23 centimeters and contains 117 serrated teeth. It's the only example we have where the endoskeletal elements around it remained intact. Today, we're pretty sure that Helicoprion's toothy swirl was located in its lower jaw and was likely used for feeding. We also know that this whorl had a handful of novel adaptations that made Helicoprion truly unique. First of all, like modern sharks, which have teeth that are endlessly replaced throughout their lives, Helicoprion were constantly producing new teeth. This, however, is where the similarity to shark teeth abruptly ends. 
unlike modern sharks, which have rows of parallel teeth on either sides of their upper and lower jaws, Helicoprion only had teeth on the bottom, and they were produced in a little tooth factory at the back of the jaw, near where the upper and lower jaws meet. These teeth grew forward along the midline of the mouth, where you'd expect the tongue to be like a dental conveyor belt, and thick cartilage supported the tooth whirl on either side. Unlike modern sharks, which can lose dozens of teeth in a month, Helicoprion never lost their teeth. Instead, they grew frontwards and down, circling back on themselves and eventually turning into that classic tooth whirl they are famous for today. The more evolutions of the whirl, the older the individual. Helicoprion likely used its spiralizer teeth to eat soft-bodied prey, like squid and small fish. With a total lack of upper teeth, each tooth of the whirl had a specific role in slicing and dicing. The front teeth likely hooked and dragged prey into the mouth, the middle teeth were for cutting and piercing, and the back teeth, which were angled backwards, pushed its meal back into the throat. Thanks to the clues its teeth have given us, Helicoprion are now divided into three distinct species. Helicoprion davisi had stout little teeth that were widely spaced with tall cutting surfaces. Helicoprion bessonoi, by contrast, had narrow, closely spaced teeth with short cutting surfaces. Helicoprion ergasamenon was like a combo of the other two, with narrow, closely spaced teeth and tall cutting surfaces. Even though Helicoprion caused scientists to spiral for over a century, at least now we have a better understanding of this extinct fish thanks to its toothy whorl. So what should we talk about next? Please let us know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for coming along on this journey through time. I'll see you later.